Have you submitted your mind to Christ? You say, well, what does that mean, Brother Paul? Well, go to Scripture. Read through. I like this better than using a concordance. Start in Genesis and read through the entire Bible and every passage in Scripture that deals with the mind. Pull it out and create a systematic theology with regard to how your mind can be submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Your eyes. What does the Bible say about your eyes? And your ears. And your tongue. And your hands. And your feet. And your body. And the way you clothe it. What does the Bible say about relationships that you are in? What are you commanded to do by Scripture? You see, my dear friend, without a vision, the people perish. And that should not be used by pastors who want to go into a building program. That's not what that text is talking about. Where there is no vision of God's law, the people run unrestrained. I want to talk to you, young person. You've learned doctrines of sovereign grace. You read the Puritans. Congratulations. Have you gone through Scripture to discover what God says about relationships and sought to understand it and submit your life to it in obedience? I know I sound like a 1960s fundamentalist preacher. Let me ask you a question. Have you gone into the Scriptures to find the principles laid out for clothing and etiquette? And have you decided that you would submit your life to those directives? You see, we talk about being biblical. In our worship, have you gone through Scripture to discover what God desires out of worship? Well, you know, we love worship this way. I don't care how you like worship, because that's not the point. What has God said? You see, in this idea, we can romance this thing to death. We can spiritualize it to death. We can say, oh, I've given my heart. Someone says, well, I've given my life to the mission field. That does not mean at the same time that you have given your heart to God. Because you can go to the mission field and be godless. And carnal and trite. You'd be better off joining National Geographic than you would a mission agency. Are you seeking in simplicity... To examine your life. I'm not talking about finding legalistic inferences and forcing them upon yourself. I'm talking about the great principles of Scripture dealing in every aspect of your personal life. Applying them to you and seeking to obey them. Let me ask you a question. If you go to the mission field. Without taking what I have said as a serious endeavor. Isn't there the possibility that the only thing you're going to do there. After you have crossed land and sea. Is make a convert like yourself that's nothing more than a two full son of hell. I mean after all my greatest fear. One of my greatest fears. Is that Fidel Castro is going to die or has already died. And that the wall around Cuba is going to fall. That's one of my greatest fears. Do you want to know why? Because every form of American churchianity that exists is going to make its way over there. I remember speaking with Conrad the first time that that I went over there to Mr. Mbewe's and he said the first thing we always like to tell people who come over to teach that you're not bringing God with you. He was here long before you bought your ticket. There isn't a whole lot of American Christianity, folks, that needs to be exported. Unless, like Ravenhill says, we put it on some kind of a raft and send it off to a lone island. And as after it's going away from the dock, we all sing the doxology. 
If we're going to endeavor to work in missions, then we must be motivated by a God that we know, a gospel that we know, and we must be a people who have endeavored with great force to examine their lives in the light of Scripture and conform their lives to what Scripture says. How much of what you have, even the way you sit in a chair, is formed by those around you and not by Scripture? It's something to think about. Let's pray. Father, I pray that, Lord, you know that you would use this to begin some on a journey of knowing you, seeking to know that which brings delight, seeking to transform, conform their lives to it. Father, help us who have begun the journey long ago to not grow weary, but to seek to know you more, to seek to understand your will, to love what you love and hate what you hate, to be a simple people. An obedient people. A people motivated by the gospel and drawn to the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen.